Van Dyke Show. Starring Dick Van Dyke. Rosemary, Maury Amsterdam, Larry Matthews, and Mary Tyler Moore. Hi, honey, I'm home. Hi. Hi, what's all this? Aren't they marvelous? Yeah, they're great. Where'd you get them? At the butcher shop. <laughs> it figures. You know what he's shopping centers today? Buddy just got a new cello at the drugstore. <laughs> no. I stopped by in France to pick up a roast. His son, Charlie, did him. What, little Charlie? Yeah, well, he's not so little anymore. He's 17 and big. Oh, that's right. I never see him standing up. He's always sitting down, flicking chickens. <laughs> well, he stopped flicking long enough to paint these. Pretty good. Aren't they, though? Isn't that ri rhino on the roller skates just great? <laughs> yeah, it's cute. This elephant blowing the bubbles is pretty good, too. The kid's yeah. got imagination, you know it. Mm -hmm. How long has he been studying? Never had a lesson. You're kidding. No. Well, he's a born artist. You gonna buy some of them? Well, maybe, but... You know what I was thinking? Wouldn't they be perfect for a children's book? Well, they're as good as the ones in Richie's. Right. Hey, what's the name of that friend of yours in the kitty book publishing business? Uh, well, Ollie Wheelwright, Giggle Books. Right, yeah. right. Well, I was thinking, Rob. Oh, that... I'm way ahead of you. I know. You want me to call Ollie about the pictures? Oh, yes. Yes, I do. Well, I will. As a matter of fact, I'll drop him off at his office in the morning. Okay. Hey, listen, have you got a picture of a steak? I'm starved to death. Listen, wouldn't it be a good idea if there was a little story to go with it? Oh, just some fried potatoes and a salad. No. <laughs> a story might help to sell the pictures. Well, I guess so. Why, is Charlie an author, too? No, no, but I found an author. Where, at the bakery? No. <laughs> well, who is it? Samantha Q. Wiggins. Never heard of her. Well, that's her pen name. What's her real name? Laura Petri. <laughs> her, uh, her I've heard that. <laughs> A kitty story? You want to write it? Yeah. Yeah, what What do you think? Well, honey, I don't, I don't know. Why not? Well, I don't know. For one thing, I'm busy and I don't feel like writing. No, Rob, I said I'd write it. But you meant we'd write it, which means I'd write it. No, I meant I'd write it. What's uh, the matter? Don't you think I could? Honey, every time you start to write something, who finishes it? Well, that's because you're a writer. I'm not. Exactly. Yeah, but you see, this is different. You don't know anything about writing children's books. Well, neither do you. So we're even. I certainly wouldn't ask somebody who's just as dumb as I am to help me write it. <laughs> Not as dumb as you are. Oh. Well, honey, I mean, I'm a professional writer, and writing kids' stories isn't that much different anyway. I... Wait a second. <laughs> You're letting me offer to help you, aren't you? Well, if you do, I'll talk you right out. But I don't want your help, even more now than before. Okay, Miss Wiggins, you go right ahead. <laughs> What is it, honey? Well, it's about my story. I was yeah. wondering if you had the time. Oh, hey, you did, uh, you did very good. What do you mean? Well, you've been working on it for two whole hours by yourself before you even asked for any help. I mean, it's good that you're really trying to write it yourself. <laughs> what do you need? Well, I, I don't need anything. It's finished. What is? My story. In two hours? Yeah, well, Rob, I don't know what it is. I just went in there and sat down and, you know, nervous, really nervous, but then suddenly everything just seemed to fall into place and the whole thing just... It flowed. It must have gushed. <laughs> All you know, I took a year. You take two hours. Also, Richard Rogers wrote Bally High on a tablecloth during dinner. He did? Well, somebody wrote something terrific that way. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I just, I just wrote all I have to write, and... Right. Now, you got to remember, I'm not a professional. Yeah, I'll try you to know. remember. I, it probably needs a lot of polishing. and. Yeah, well, you know, honey, uh, Hamlet needed some touching up. Yeah, know. well, it's... Uh, and the grammar's probably not right. You know, it'll... Honey, you, uh, you want me to read that, or shall I wait for the movie to come out? <laughs> what? What? Which part? Oh, uh, you spelled rhinoceros here. R-Y-E. Rhinoceros. <laughs> Why noceros like a whole wheat noceros? Yeah. <laughs> now watch that spelling. Yeah. Think maybe I'll make some coffee. Laura? Yeah. You finished? Uh-huh. Well? Honey, 
It's a little hard to be objective about something your own wife wrote. Then don't be objective. Be nice and say it's very good. It's very good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now tell me what you really thought. It's very good. You mean it? Yeah, there are a couple of little rough spots in here. You mean it? Well, I mean, maybe more than a couple, but... No, I'm still on It's Very Good. You mean that? <laughs> well, sure, honey, it's very good. Just a couple of little rough spots, that's all. What, 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 which part, about the giraffe and the kangaroo? No, no, the uh, elephant and the lion here. Huh. Gee, I thought that was good. But it, it probably does need something. I'll tell you one thing, you avoided the obvious cliché of making the fox the antagonist. Oh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, making the fox the protagonist was kind of daring. I did good. Yeah, very good. There's just a few spots here, neat little... Smooth enough. Oh, that's good. Right. How do we do that? Well, it's hard, honey. You, ha you have to know uh, construction, you know. Right, right. H how do we do that? And Well, of course, then there's motivation. Even in a, even in a kiddie story, honey, they, all your characters have to have proper motivation. Oh, absolutely. You know? How do we do that? Oh, honey, that's the key to all writing. You know, I mean, I could probably sit down and do it myself a lot faster than I could explain it to you, you know. You, you don't think that I could do it? Well, that's, that's not it. I think we're at the point right now with this where a professional touch is what is needed, you know? I mean, if you really want a chance to sell Charlie's pictures. Oh. Well, right. Well, honey, would you like me to do it? You? Yeah, I mean, you know, it doesn't need that much. A little smoothing out, that's all. Well, great. <laughs> oh, boy, Rob, this is so exciting. i got to call Charlie and tell him. Well, a little, a little premature there. Don't get his hopes up. Well, why not? Mine are. <laughs> Hi, Rob. Hi. Oh, hi. There he is, the grimmer half of the Brothers Grimm. <laughs> hey, how's the king of the kitty books? Not so good. What are you doing back so early? We went to the delicatessen. Thought you'd like some. What'd you get me? Oh, something to kind of put you in the mood. Milk and animal matzahs. <laughs> Can we help you? Oh, thanks. Boy, this is so hard. Did you ever try to write for an animal? Yeah, Alan Brady. There's <laughs> a way to make this thing very interesting. Yeah, throw it in a garbage can. Boy, such sensitivity. Well, so what? We gotta get our own work done. Yeah, he's right. I'm sorry. I promised Laura I'd help her fix this thing. Golly, it needs something. Yeah, a bonfire. Oh, come on, buddy. Maybe it needs some kind of a gimmick. Like what? Furry pages. Furry pages? Yeah, it's very practical. It's cold out, Cynthia. Go put on your book. <laughs> no, it doesn't need a gimmick. It's in the writing, I've heard it. How about making it the centerfold of one of those magazines like they got in the barber shops? You mean a giraffe and black mesh stockings? What's the matter with that? It could be a whole series, Animal of the Month. Hey, Charlie, did you see the zebra this month? No stripes. <laughs> Come on, you guys. You know what? What's the matter with this thing? Danny can't learn a lesson if he's an elephant blowing bubbles. Well, he took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> that's it. The whole thing's making sense now. To who? To me. <laughs> Danny, if he's going to learn a lesson, has to learn it the hard way. Yeah. Excuse me, you guys. I got to get this down while I'm thinking. Of it. Rob, what about the sketch? Oh uh, well, yeah. Well, we'll do it tomorrow. Hey, well, we have staff meetings tomorrow. Oh. How about tomorrow night at my house? Yeah, what's for dinner? I don't know. Well, what am I asking for? Whatever it is, it's got to be better than my house. Yeah? Well, unless I have a date. <laughs> I'll be there. Of course, you know, it uh, needs a lot of polish, yeah. <laughs> I did it, uh, I did it pretty fast, you know. Main thing, I just don't remember it's not perfect, yet. Wow, Rob, you... <laughs> really changed my whole story, didn't you? No, no, not really. Well, yeah, really. It's not at all like the one I wrote. Be yourself is still the theme. Only, only in the way I have it there, Danny really learns a lesson. It's much stronger. In other words, in the end, he, he really knows it's better to be a little boy than it is to be an elephant. Well, I, I think everybody knows that. <laughs> my gorilla who couldn't roller skate was so cute. <laughs> Honey, that's kid stuff. Well, it's supposed to be. You don't have to write down to kids, honey. It's about time somebody wrote up to them. Yeah, uh, except you wrote around them. <laughs> Missed them completely, and I don't think you utilized any of the charm of the drawings. Are, are you kidding? Honey, now those drawings are much more important than ever. They become a contrast. They're a counterpoint. Like when the bubbles float away and the way the hunters follow the bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, but they took the elephant's tusks away. That's simply part of the lesson, honey. Sometimes life can be painful. And you made my lion a killer? There again, reality, honey. Life can be hard. Not that hard. All right, what are we having for dinner? With chicken. That's right. Who killed the chicken? Charlie's father. The kid's an artist. His father's a killer. <laughs> Rob, why did you do this to my story? Honey, because you asked me to. I did not. You volunteered. You were just going to smooth it out. But, boy, you really smoothed it to death. Well, honey, look, believe me. This is better. And remember, we want to help Charlie sell those pictures. Okay, what about your vocabulary? What about my vocabulary? Look at this word. Morose. Kids aren't going to know what morose means. Are you kidding? Kids will know what that means. No, darling, it's much too big a word. Well, any kid, I'll bet you Richie knows what that means. Oh, he doesn't. Oh. Now, Richie, come in here a minute, will you? Rich! I told you! You did that! He did, too. <laughs> Richie, hand me this. What does morose mean? Huh? It's, it's a word you hear every day. Have you ever heard of the word morose? Yeah, lots of times. What does it mean, Rich? Some kind of flower. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> all right, all right, I'll make morose sad then. Well, Rob, I just don't know what to say. Well, don't say anything. You don't like that one? Just uh, write one yourself. I already did. By the way, where is my story? Well, with the uh, cutting, honey, and the pasting, and uh, uh, I, well, I had to throw it out. Well, thanks a lot, Bob. Thanks a heck of a lot. Where are you going? I'm going to rewrite the original story that I already wrote. I am not doing any more rewriting. Oh, you bet you are not. <laughs> hey, how's this? Alan's a spy, and he's in the penthouse. And the new maid is coming. Only she's not a maid. She's a secret agent for Dr. Dirt. Hey, that's good. And Alan pretends he's reading a newspaper, but all the time he's very suspicious. Why? Well, she's vacuuming the rug with a sawed-off shotgun. How's it going? Just as great. Hey, best sketch we ever wrote. Not so good, huh? Rotten. Hey, Laura, why don't you sit in? We could use some new ideas. No, no, Rob doesn't think I'm a very good writer. I didn't say that. Oh, well, then what does the word stinks mean? Uh oh there he is, the ever-popular Mr. Blunt. Honey, I never said it stinks. Well, that's what you meant. Honey, listen. But Rob, you got a sketch to finish. Buddy and Sally would like to work. Forget to work. I'd rather watch a fight. Shut up. <laughs> Buddy, there's no fight. Rob just thinks his story is the best, and I think mine is. That's all. That's all it takes to start a good fight. So it's not a fight. It's a little difference of opinion. Right. And I know how to solve it, too. We asked Buddy and Sally for their opinion. Oops, I think I hear my mother calling. Yeah, she wants me to drive you home. Yeah. But wait a minute. Nothing personal here. We just would like to get an objective opinion to settle this thing. All right, I like both stories. Yeah, me too. It's a hung jury. Next case. Oh, no, no, no. Five minutes. That's all it'll take. I want to read you both stories. You won't know which one is which. Whose is whose. Now sit down. All right, all right, all right. But before we start, I want you to remember one thing. We love both of you equally. Right, except Laura looks better in a bikini. <laughs> going to prove by this. We're going to decide which one of the scripts to submit to sell Charlie's pictures. That's what started the whole thing, isn't it? Where are they? I'll get them. I don't like taking sides. What are we going to do? Why don't we just be wishy-washy? <laughs> okay, now here's the script. Now you're not going to know which one is which. Okay. This is story A. It's called Seven Dreams for Danny. It was a bright, sunny day. The sky was blue, the breeze was warm, and the grass was the greenest green ever. It was going to be a happy day for Danny. Sure, he didn't have to listen to this. <laughs> and Danny knew then he didn't want to be a lion, a giraffe, or an elephant anymore. He wanted to be himself, and Danny became Danny forever and forever. Well, oh, that's very good. That's very wait, good. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold, you hold your comments now. You've heard both stories. Better be quiet. Don't throw you out of school. <laughs> All right, now this is story B. What a wonderful title. <laughs> Danny set this room. The wind howled outside. The black clouds rolled, there was thunder, boom! And the lightning cracked. Gee, I wonder whose story this is. <laughs> then it began, it began to rain. Yeah, I hope the kid got an umbrella. Darling, do you plan to record a sound effect? 
next track to sell with the book. Come on, honey. No, I read yours straight through. Yeah, you sure did. Straight through. <laughs> Listen, Danny closed the window. Shh, don't. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Suddenly he heard his mother coming up the stairs. His mother sounds like a clock. <laughs> yeah, but I think he's cuckoo. <laughs> Danny knew what his mother was thinking. Oh, I can't wait to hear this sound. His mother was very angry. She had told Danny to stay in his room. Danny was morose. <laughs> what does morose mean? <laughs> he smiled as he looked out the window and saw the last few raindrops softly striking the window pane. <laughs> what do you think? Well, I don't know about the story, Rob, but I think we can get a guest shot on the Sullivan Show. I must say, this has been a dandy evening. Waiter, my check, please. <laughs> Come on, now, which one did you like the best? No, no, you mean which one is going to sell the pictures the best? Well, that too, honey, but let's face it. Now, there's something more at stake here. Now, which, what do you think? Which one? Well, it's a little hard to tell. Would you mind reading both of them again? No. Oh. <laughs> Rob, look, both of them were very, very good. Sally, A or B? Well, if I have to make a choice, A. Well, you're, you're, you're entitled to your opinion. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Buddy, what about you? I'm entitled to her opinion, too. <laughs> hey. All right, then, that's, that, that's the first ballot. Oh, come on. <laughs> they made a choice. Well, not a very good one. What was the matter with my story? Well, nothing. Out of all of them you read, there must be pictures number two. Oh, I didn't think you did. That's made up your own mind. It's all over. They liked yours best, so yours is the one that will take Dolly. That's all. Rob. Huh? That's my story. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, hold it. I got something to say. You want to change your vote? <laughs> no, I, I just think that we're not qualified to judge. Now, look, why don't you take both stories to Ollie and let him pick the one he wants to do? Of course. Horse. Yeah, that's a good idea. He's going to buy the pictures. He should be the one to choose the best story, huh? Right. Take them both to Ollie and let him pick Laura's. <laughs> Some office. Yeah, doesn't really look like the office of a man who publishes kitty books, though. Well, what do you want to see? Tiny furniture? <laughs> Rob, are you still upset? No, I have no reason to be. We'll just let Ollie decide which story is the best. That's all. Right. No matter what happens, you're still the best writer in the family, and you always will be. Thank you very much, Miss Wiggins. Coming from you, that's quite a compliment. You are upset. No, I am not upset. <laughs> Good morning, Robert. Nice to see you. Ah, you must be Laura. How do you do, Mr. Wheelwright? Call me Ollie. Ollie, yeah, your uh, book exploded. Oh, yes, that's for the pre readers. Did the scare to death? <laughs> Yes, indeed. Makes them want to learn to read directions sooner. <laughs> Marsha, I'm having dinner with Puddles the Clown. Call the club and make a reservation. And be sure to remind Puddles to wear a suit this time. And tell our lawyers to cancel the contract on uh, Dr. Dumpling. Oh, Dr. Dumpling? Richie loves him. Yes, so do most of the bartenders in town. Oh, gee, what a shame. Those talking furniture books of his are wonderful, so creative. Oh, he's not so creative, my dear. He merely writes what he sees. <laughs> Molly, it looks like we've caught you on a bad morning. Robert, I haven't had a good morning since I became an adult. Sit down, Robert. Oh, you, look very, you look very, you look very prosperous. Well, so do you, Ollie. The kitty book business seems to be booming. Oh, it's like everything else. As Plato said, trouble here, trouble there, little trouble everywhere. Plato said that. Plato the parrot. In the Adventures of Captain Graham Cracker. Uh, Ollie, look, I know you're busy. We just wanted to know what you thought of the stuff we sent in. Well, Robert, <coughs> Laura, I, uh, excuse me. Hello? Hi, ho, Raleigh, this is Ollie. How are things on Fire Island? Jolly. Raleigh, I want the rest of those stories on the flower that joined the circus. And Ollie, do me a favor, tone it down. The last chapter you sent me was much too sexy. Excuse me, Laura. <laughs> now, about your stories. Excuse me. Marsha, hold all calls. I don't want to speak to anybody but Walt Disney. I've been trying to get in touch with him for years. <laughs> now then, as I said, uh, I like both of your stories. And I understand yours was the first attempt, Laura. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> but Walt. All right, all right. I've got it right here. 
A leafy head of lettuce, salty, skinny pretzels, and baby Brussels sprouts. Oh, those for a new book? No, for dinner. It's my wife. <laughs> she gets so no matter what. Now, as I was saying, I like both of your stories very much. I was particularly intrigued with Laura's characters. Yeah, they were uh, very good. In mine, I, I was trying to... Uh, yes, and, and I loved her use of symbolism. Yeah, they, they were wonderful. Did you notice how I tried to use their symbolism in mine? I always notice symbolism. As a matter of fact, Laura had some very fresh symbolism. Well, thank you again. She did? I tell you, I can see symbolism even when it isn't there. Now, you take this character, Raleigh, on Fire Island. If people knew what he was really writing about, we'd all be in jail. <laughs> Ollie, in plain, simple language, what did you think of my story? Well, Robert, the, 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 the psychology of the main character that you uh, tried to institute into a thematic uh, uh, poem... Ollie, Ollie. Robert, it stunk. <laughs> I, 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 what was wrong with it? All that violence and killing. I got more laughs out of reading The Hunchback of Notre Dame. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was trying to go for some stark reality there. New concept. Oh, that's the old concept. Mother Goose has been scaring kids for years. That crazy old broad was vicious. Well, honey, I, <laughs> you were right. Yours, yours was a better story. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of you. Oh, darling, thank you. But it really, it was just beginner's luck. <laughs> Hardly luck, Laura, my dear. Yours is a classic. A classic? Well, gee, I thought it was good, but a classic? Well, how about that? That's terrific, honey. Well, Boy, that's wonderful. You gonna, you gonna buy it? I couldn't afford the lawsuit. What lawsuit? Did you ever hear of Rudolf Schmetner? No. Well, in 1905, in a small village in Switzerland, Rudolf Schmetner wrote a story called The Mouse in the Mud Hole. So what? So, in reality, Laura's little Danny is Schmetner's mouse. It is? Mm-hmm. And her dream is Schmetner's mud hole. The mouse in the mud hole. Oh, my gosh. My grandmother used to read that to me. No, 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 don't feel too badly, Laura. It happens all the time. Oh. As a matter of fact, many people say that my Captain Graham Cracker is really a crummy Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> well, we're a great team. I'm Mother Goose, and you're a pirate. Oh, I'm just so embarrassed. Look, uh, Ollie, thanks a lot for your time. I'm sorry we bothered you. Thank you. Very uh, Robert, much. don't you want to know whether I like the little butcher boy's pictures? Oh, boy, our excitement about us, we forgot about him. Did you like them? Yes, indeed. I like them very much. As a matter of fact, I'm going to publish them. Oh, that's great. Honey, we sold them without a story. Oh, but there is a story. There is? Yes, I wrote it myself. It's a charming little tale of a lad who goes into the forest, sleeps in the animals' houses, sits in their chairs, eats their porridge. Well, Ollie, isn't that, isn't that a Goldilocks? Goldilocks was with bears. Mine is with three little pigs. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Hi, darling. Hi, Getting Annie. ready in a minute. Oh! oh. <laughs> you better quit kissing on the run. Oh. Boy, hey, guess what? Ollie called. He gave Charlie a full-time job as an artist. Yeah, I know. Frank called today. Well, I guess we're regular patrons of the arts, huh? Yeah, I guess so. You know what Frank did? He was so grateful. He sent us a present. Oh, he didn't have to do that. What'd he send? This. Look at that turkey. It's not a turkey. It's the biggest chicken in Westchester County. Honey, we made a mistake getting Charlie that job. What do you mean? Look at the pin feathers. Tons of them. Oh, dear. Well, Kitty Books needs Charlie, but the meat market needs him more. Hmm? Well, in this day and age, you can find a lot of good artists, but where do you find a first-class chicken flicker? 